I'm pleased to, uh, to introduce Greg Prescott, who is responsible for holding this conference of N5D. <laughs> I think Michelle forgot to mention that I'm the king of the introverts. <laughs> so, bear with me here. Okay. Wow. Can you guys feel the energy in the room right now? It's like off the charts. This is great. <laughs> so I want to uh, initially talk a little about the Mandela effect. And that a lot of people are experiencing that. And what we're seeing are basically you know, glitches in time, and a lot of people are feeling like time is speeding up. But what's happening is that timelines are converging right now, and this is what basically is creating the Mandela effect. And when these timelines converge into the most optimal position, what's happening is we're seeing the best possible outcome happening, and it's being confirmed through the Mandela effect. So does, does anyone here feel like time is speeding up? Yeah. Has anyone here experienced glitches in time? Yeah, so this is proof right here that things are changing and the timeline is definitely changing to something incredibly positive. And I'll be talking a little bit, bit more about that. So in college, I took a class called The Psychology of Sleep and Dreams and I was a psychology major. And I went around and I asked everybody, who's the hardest professor to take? And they all said unanim unanimously, Dr. Rainville. So I signed up for four of his classes because if you take the hardest professor, you're gonna learn the most and get the most out of it. So I'm taking the psychology of sleep and dreams. And uh, he was blind. This is a really interesting story. He was blind, but he was what they call advantageously blind, which means he had eyesight and then lost his eyesight down the road. Apparently he had a hockey accident or something and he ended up losing his eyesight. But what happened was he would go to these uh, conferences for the blind and interestingly enough, they would segregate themselves, the advantageously blind and the blind. And I thought that was really interesting that they would do that. But what happened with him was as he, uh, right after he got blind, uh, was blinded, uh, he would still have dreams where he could see things like you and me, but eventually that faded away and his other senses took over in his dreams. And that's what we're seeing right now, right here today with everyone. Our senses are getting magnified right now. And uh, the senses are just, they're, they're, for me, I don't know, they, they, my third eye opened up um, maybe about six months ago and I'm seeing a lot more entities, visions, orbs, and stuff like that, and I, I don't know if anyone else is doing the same thing, but yeah, you, we're sensing a lot more with our senses right now. So in this class, he uh, suggested that we take a piece of paper and a pen and leave it by our bed and write down our dreams. Now, does anyone not dream? Okay, we have a couple people, and that, that's okay. One of his recommendations was to put a glass of lemon water by your bed and have a sip of the lemon water before you go to bed. And then throughout the night, drink the lemon water. Sonia Chiquette also said the same thing. So try that. Another thing you might want to try is melatonin. I know that if I take melatonin before I go to bed, I get some incredible <laughs> dreams that are going on, so give that a shot too. Maybe wash the melatonin down with some lemon water. <laughs> Yeah, so, and by a show of hands, has anyone ever had a dream about the future that came true? This is great. <laughs> I love that. That's, that's great, because, yeah, I've had so many of those, and I'll talk about a couple of them, about what it means to us in the future. Um, I was originally uh, in upstate New York before I moved to Florida, and uh, my ex-wife came down here, the mother of my daughter, and uh, to Sarasota. And she called me from Sarasota and said, Greg, what would you think about moving to Sarasota? I said, sure, great, let me ask my ex-wife number two. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So uh, I, I talked to Jody, ex-wife number two, and told Amy, ex-wife number one, that uh, yeah, it sounded great. So we all packed up and moved to Florida. I had joint custody, and uh, Amy was custodial, which means she can ultimately make all the decisions. So in 2011, about maybe six or seven years later, uh, she decided that she was going to move back to New York. And she didn't tell me this until like a couple weeks beforehand. Now my daughter, as most people know, she's my everything. She's, if it wasn't for my daughter Brittany, we wouldn't be here right now. She, she's the reason why N5D exists. So my ex-wife ended up moving back to New York. And it broke my heart. At the time I was a child and family therapist. I had a patent pending on a program I wrote designed to help families who are at risk of dissolution, children going through the reunification process, and for parents in need of parenting classes. I have a book called 100 Plus Common Parenting Mistakes, and I wrote a program that was approved by the area's largest human service facilities in the area. But I knew I had to get back to New York. So I had this dream where I was in New York with my daughter leaving an apartment, and I go out to my car, and my car is covered in a huge Easter egg shell. And it made absolutely no sense whatsoever why that was happening. But, uh, so I wrote, write the dream down, and uh, a few days later, a friend of mine calls me up. He said, hey Greg, I'm opening up a bar. Would you come here and help me out as a bartender? I heard you're a great bartender. I said, yeah, sure. So I go up there, that was my reason to leave Florida. I dissolved my business and everything else. Left and went to New York and, uh, to help my friend out. And of course, the first thing I'm going to do is see my daughter when I go to New York. So I go up there, pull into the driveway, and my daughter's out back, and I give her this big bear hug. And anyone who knows me knows I give huge bear hugs. And uh, I give her this big bear hug, and I realize as I'm hugging her, what day it was? Easter Sunday. And that was why I dreamt about the Easter egg shell being on my car. I was going to be with my daughter on Easter Sunday. So it's really important to keep a dream journal, because at the time when you have these dreams, it might not make sense, but you know, down the road, sooner than you may think sometimes, it's gonna make sense. So, who here has had dreams of tidal waves? Okay, leave your hand up if it was positive. This is good, this is really good, thank you, thank you. Um, now, I'm not going to go too much into this because I already have the video on the N5D YouTube channel. And uh, I've written several articles about it, and you can check those out on N5D. There's a search box on the upper right-hand corner of every page. Just type in Tidal Wave Greg, and you'll find it. But I'll just give you the condensed version for those who haven't heard about this, this dream. Um, I was at the beach, and I'm walking toward the beach, and this huge tidal wave is coming toward me. And I turn around, and there's a beach house behind me. And I'm about to go into the beach house, but when I turned around, there's another tidal wave coming that's ten times bigger than the original one coming up over this mountain. So I go into the beach house, and the water goes over me. And while it's over me, I can stick my hand through the window and touch the water. And there was absolutely no sense of fear, none whatsoever. So the water goes back again, and... I get out of the beach house and I look up and over the mountain again comes one final tidal wave. So I go back to the beach house, it goes over and goes back again. I get out and at that point I remember that my, my truck was at the top of the mountain. So I go up to the mountain to look for my truck and uh, the energy had changed. All of a sudden, all you could see and feel is unconditional love. What's, what this dream means and this is why I was talking a little about dreams uh, to begin this speech, is that water is immutable energy. It can be solid, liquid, or gas. It wasn't water that went over me. These are two waves of energy that are converging. And when this happens, something magical is going to happen. Something incredible is going to happen. I also get visions. I had a vision one time, and this was before the dream, but it made sense that it was part of the dream. I saw myself standing in front of me, and all of a sudden, and I, I told this to Michelle, this wave of energy floods the planet, and that was the word I used, floods. Floods the planet with white light. And the only thing you'll see or feel 
is that energy of unconditional love. Any third dimensional issues that you've had, money, stress, work, relationships, they're completely gone. It's gonna happen like that. And I think that that was perhaps, it was either when the waves converge or maybe that was the final cleansing wave. My gut instinct tells me that it's when the waves converge that that will happen. And that final wave, the third wave, is for people that have didn't perhaps make the transition the first time around, and they have a, a, a chance on the second time around. So that's the uh, tidal wave dream. So in a different psychology class I took, it was called the Child and, Psy Child and Adolescent Psychology with Dr. John Van Valkenburg. We were asked, what is your earliest childhood memory? So I remember being in the crib, <laughs> and uh, my mother had she had this little phonograph, portable phonograph, and she would play these Disney records. So the record ends, and the needle's bobbing up and down. <laughs> and I'm looking through the crib watching, and there's nothing you can do. I mean, here I am, this little baby, just watching the needle bob up and down. I should have at least cried or something. <laughs> so, but my father, he remembers part of his soul contract, being on the other side before incarnating. Is there anyone here that has... There's one right there, two, three. Yeah, this is great. My father, the, the only thing he remembered though was the house he's living in right now. When he got this house, he said, he said this was it. This is what I dreamt about, or not dreamt about, this is what I saw in my soul contract before I came here. And that was it, you know? So my father is very metaphysical, although he won't admit it. <laughs> uh, my sister Lola passed away in 2011 and uh, of, of uh, well, it doesn't matter. She passed away. And uh, of course, we all miss her dearly and all, but my father, I think he took it the hardest. And after she passed away, he said, I wish I could have hugged her one more time. That night he had a dream. And there's a knock on the door. And it's my sister, Lola. I might cry right now, but... Give me a minute. He goes, why didn't you come in? Why didn't you just walk in, your family? She goes, I just wanted to hug you one more time. So, and I told my dad, I said, you know, that's, that wasn't a dream. That was real. That was real. And sometimes it almost feels like our dreams are more real than actual life in, in third dimension. So, has anyone ever had dreams about UFOs? Oh, come on, put your hands up, you all have. <laughs> has anyone dreamt about being on board of a, a UFO? Oh, this is great. <laughs> I love you people. <laughs> I'm with family. That makes it a lot easier for the king of introverts to speak in front of you guys. <laughs> so, I had this dream one time where, and this is fascinating, there's 12 of us standing in a circle, and we were manifesting. I don't know what it was we were manifesting, and I wish I could remember, but it was amazing. And we were communicating telepathically, and whatever it was we were manifesting was in a hologram in the center of us. And one person would come up, come up with an idea, and everyone would telepathically, telepathically say, wow, that's awesome, but somebody would, would say, what if we did this? That's even better, and that's how, what we were doing. That's the collective consciousness of group manifestation. That's where we're heading to. So it's, it's really exciting. Now, the reason I bring up these dreams is I know that a lot of people have had similar dreams. Um, you've had just about every dream I've had. <laughs> I know Lisa here has dream walked through some of my dreams and, uh, and, and vice versa. So you know, what it really means is that we are all basically living the same dream. And what we're seeing through the Mandela effect is that timelines are converging and the dream is becoming reality. So it's interesting that my sisters and I all have the same mark on the back of our necks. I don't know if you have siblings that have similar marks as on, on you as well. Michelle has Orion's belt all over her body. <laughs> you know? So what it makes me wonder is that are we being tracked by our star families? Because I know I have incredible amounts of protection both here and on the other side of the veil. So I know I'm not being tracked by any malevolent being. 
And it makes me wonder if we're being tracked by our star, star families. Now, my parents and my sisters all have red hair. My dad has red hair and blue eyes. Red hair and blue eyes is the most rare eye-hair color combination on the planet. And they say that redheads originate from Lyra. So, you know, if you don't, if you have any lineage of, of family that has red hair, red hair, or red hair and blue eyes, chances are you're from the birthplace of humanity. Lyra, Lyra, however you want to pronounce it. My sisters used to tease me though, because I didn't have red hair. <laughs> you're adopted. <laughs> I would cry myself to sleep at night. My parents didn't know this until maybe 10 years ago. <laughs> They're like, how could you do that to your brother? It was just like an inside joke. But it was there to show me that I am part of that family. And we've been here a long time. The key to prophetic dreams is to eliminate the fear. Once you eliminate the fear, your dreams are either going to be incredibly futuristic or mundane, you might be walking your dog or something like that, but it's not going to be anything, anything fear-related. So when we dream, the unconscious and subconscious mind plays out everything through metaphors. So, for example, if you're really stressed out, you might see this huge tire running your, uh, rolling your way, and it's overwhelming. And that's the kind of metaphor it is. You know, if a, if a boss was having fantasies about his secretary, you might see her bending over and opening and shutting cabinets. The opening and shutting is the motion of sex, so that's, that's the kind of dream that uh, he would have about that, true metaphor. I noticed, though, that in dream analysis, if you go online, there's a lot of great interpretations for dream analysis. But what they're missing is the metaphysical aspects of dream analysis. And I'll explain that in a second here. I had this dream where I was standing in the foundation of a house being built, a bunch of cinder blocks and stuff, and there's three ladders that are, that are up on the foundation. And I climb up them, and I've got one leg on the left side of one ladder and one on the right, and I'm straddling the middle ladder. Now, ladders typically represent getting a raise, good fortune, stuff along that line, but when you look at a ladder, what do you see? DNA. DNA. So what that, that dream told me, and I felt like it was more of a global interpretation of the dream for everyone, not just me, but we're heading towards a DNA upgrade. And because it could be 12 strands, but I couldn't imagine myself in my dream straddling 12 <laughs> strands of well, 12 ladders, so that, that wasn't going to happen. But what it was definitely saying is that we're going to have a, a DNA upgrade, and it's probably already going on. What's interesting, too, is that you want to keep this in mind, too, when you're dreaming. If you're in a house or in a car, you're the house also. You are the car. We've all had that dream. Well, many of us have had that dream where we're driving and we hit the brakes and you can't stop. That means something in your life is out of control. So think about that if you ever have that dream again. And then try to figure out what it is because your dreams are always giving you messages. So, how are we doing on time here? Good. Okay. Got it. Way ahead of time. <laughs> this is good. Uh, so I'd like to talk a little about the third eye right now. Um, one of the four cell types in the pineal gland is called the pineoocyte. Pineoocyte, I think. I can't pronounce it. But anyway, it has a strong resemblance to the uh, photoreceptors cells in your eye. So it's basically, that's why it's called the third eye. You know, it has rods and cones just like your eye. And it secretes melatonin, which helps you sleep. And you, of course, you can buy the melatonin and drink the lemon water. Or you can, uh, it, al it also secretes serotonin, which is what makes you feel good. As we age, the pineal gland, uh, gland calcifies and shrinks. And at the optimal size, the pineal gland is actually the size of a grape. <laughs> but as we get older, it shrinks and calcifies, and it's due mainly to the food and the water that we drank, and you know, there's ways of opening it and getting through that by watching your diet and uh, being cognizant of what you're eating. Um, now, I opened up my third eye about maybe five or six months ago. Does anyone here have a fully open third eye? One, two, 
Okay. I'm guessing that by the within one week, we're going to have a whole room full of people with their third eye open, and it's so easy to do. The best time, this is what, you know, you can go online, you can read all these different ways, and they're so complicated, and they make it so difficult. It's so simple. When you're in the meditative state, when you close your eyes, many of us see that white light, or it might be a purple or blue light swirling around. That right there is telling you you are this close to having your third eye opened. What you want to do is when you go to bed, make sure you're, you're really tired because your mind is in the alpha state when you're tired. And you might have some uh, additional benefits from this. I know that when my mind goes in the alpha state, I channel. So you might actually start channeling too. But when you're really tired, close your eyes and get into that meditative state. And what I do is I basically, I'm, I'm almost looking at my eyelids and kind of maybe slightly focusing on the third eye, but not really very much. And you're going to start seeing those swirls going on. And eventually those swirls are going to become the faint outline of images. And you can train yourself to start seeing the images clearer and clearer until you're almost seeing, it's like watching a movie at that point. What I did was, I got to the point of where I made, the hardest part about this though, is because you're so tired, falling asleep and maintaining that, you have to train your, your mind to stay in the alpha state. And like I said, you will be able to possibly channel on, uh, when your mind is in the alpha state doing that too. Be careful who and what you channel as well. But, so I ended up doing this on the beach. And when, when you're able to do this, it doesn't matter if there's a thousand people around you, kids screaming and whatever. So I'm on the beach, I'm facing, I'm facing the ocean, and I'm doing my third eye thing. And I look up with my eyes shut, I look up and I see my spirit guide dancing in the background, Tamara. Now let me tell a little about Tamara first. I was born in upstate New York, and uh, I always had this affinity to palm trees and the ocean. No idea why. I lived in the Catskill Mountains, but it, it, they just made me smile. So, five or six years ago, I had this dream that I met my spirit guide. And her name's Tamara. But uh, she comes up to me, and she has long black hair. She looks like she's an American Indian. Uh, long, straight black hair, flowing white gown. She goes, hi, Greg. I'm your spirit guide. My name's Tamara. And here I am. I have the opportunity to ask her anything in the world. And what do I do? I repeat her name over and over and over again. Tamara, 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 Tamara. She probably thought I was an idiot. <laughs> so I said it so many times that I woke myself up out of my sleep. Here it is like three o'clock in the morning. I'm, I'm like, okay, every name means something. So I go online and I look it up. Tamara means palm tree. So that's why, yeah, I've always had that affinity. So here I am doing my third eye meditation on the beach. And I see Tamara, she, and I'm, like I said, I'm facing the beach, but that's not what I saw. I saw like the Red Rock Canyons right there, and she's dancing around, you know, maybe 50 yards away from me, and I yell, hey, Tamara, come here. And she comes towards me, and I think, okay, this is my opportunity. I can ask her anything I want, finally. And she gets about two feet away from me, and I'm about ready to ask her whatever I was going to ask her, and she jumps right into me. I merged with my guide. And I had never heard of that before until I recently started talking about this. And then more and more people are saying, that happened to me too, that happened to me too. So this, this is one of the many benefits that you'll have when you open your third eye. You don't know what exactly is going to happen, but you might find stuff like that happening to you, and it's, it's really amazing. So I encourage everyone to try doing that. Um, like I said, on N5D, I have the article on how to open your third eye. There's, it's also on our N5D YouTube channel, so if you might, might, might want to listen to that a couple times over, but I can guarantee you that many of you will have your third eye open within a week. So I think that's, that's about all I had ready for right now. I, I know I spoke a lot quicker than I planned on, <laughs> but so if anyone has any questions or anything, yeah. Uh -huh. 
pages. Yes. And then um, I'll get the colors going on. But a few nights ago, I actually had my eyes opened. <clears throat> the room got all whitey, foggy, mm -hmm. and all colors. I was all three eyes was open, wow. like that way. And uh -huh. I was just watching, just like this. Oh, sorry. oh I was just watching, uh -huh. just with all three eyes wide open like that. And I'm like, this is cool. It's blowing yes. me away. So I don't know what that, is that strange to do that with all no. three eyes open? No, not at all. I think, I, I think what's happening is, is similar to what happened with me is when your mind does get in that alpha state, anything can happen. You're gonna, you may, because my eyes are shut, if my eyes were open, maybe I would have saw a presence, the presences of other people or beings or colors or something like that. So I think that when you get in that state of mind, that's when you're going to be able to open your third eye or channel and stuff like that. So you're right there. You're right there. Yes. <laughs> Uh, I wanted to ask a question uh, on the uh, Mandela effect. Is bilocation a symptom of that? Could well be. I'm, I'm not 100% sure, but uh, I, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me if it was. Like when you know something's there and it disappears, yeah. and two days later it's back in the, where you put it. Yeah, I, that happened with, to me with keys. Putting keys down and then I put them in the same spot every time and then they're gone and they showed up without me moving or touching anything. Yes. Okay. Andrew? Yeah, about the Mandela effect. Some radio uh, shows I've been listening to recently seem to think the Mandela effect is actually caused by CERN and other artificial means. They don't seem to think it's natural. It's They're wrong. wrong. <laughs> <laughs> They're wrong. It, it's, the timelines are converging. Yeah, and you know maybe CERN has something to do, to, to do with it, but the, the timelines are converging to a positive timeline right, right now. Patricia? The, the examples that I see, though, on the Mandela effect that they talk about, mm -hmm. really in the grand scheme, if they're quite insignificant, so to camp onto what he's saying, mm -hmm. I can't help but wonder if there's some kind of conspiratorial getting you just to concentrate on these unique little idiosyncrasies about, I know it was this, now it's this. Right. All this time we're spending an energy talking about all this stuff that means like nothing, like what are they doing in the background? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand that. that, that could be a distraction. And some of these are, actually. Uh, for example, one of the ones that they say is a uh, Mandela effect I don't agree with. Uh, they're saying Jiffy peanut butter. What they're doing is mistaking Jiff and Skippy. So yeah. instead of Skippy, Jiffy. And that's one of the ones that is more of a distraction. So look over here while everything else is going on. Got one, time for one more. Yes. That's when you start seeing the. the... No. 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 I don't. Yeah, okay. <laughs> That's it for now. Thank you.